Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. As you can see, we are there as a team for WordWise Institute of Eschatology. Now, this video you're about to see is the actual message for Sunday morning with one small insert from today. And it had to be short because of the, of the squeeze of time. But I am speaking for WordWise Online Church with Pastor Curtis Dotson on your left. God bless you as you hear the word. However, we do have, we do have one of our doctors. So, Curtis, Pat Sepple, who's going to be speaking today, and she is going to be coming from Luke 4, and the message for today is going to be squeezing. It will come. Okay. This is Pat Love, and I'm reading Luke chapter 4, starting at 16. So, we came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Keep that in mind, poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. So we've got the brokenhearted, we've got the captives. And the recovering of sight to the blind, remember that. To set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all that were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he said, <clears throat> and he began to say to them, Today the scripture, this scripture, is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, what I want to say with that is, we don't always recognize what Jesus came to do. We consider him our Savior. He came to forgive us for our sins. He died on the cross, right, in our place. But the problem with that is, we forget all the little details that are included when he proclaims his calling. He came to heal, he came to bless the poor, mm -hmm. heal the brokenhearted, mm -hmm. release the captives. That means he came to deal those deal with those who are poor in spirit, mm -hmm. to make them rich in spirit, give them that abundant life. He came to mm -hmm. give those who are hurting, the brokenhearted. He came to heal those. See, when you come up as a child and you have emotional and psychological scars, there's not one of those scars that he cannot heal. Amen. You remember that. That is what he wore on his, on his back. When, when the, um, Isaiah says, by his stripes, we are, healed. He, we are healed by his stripes that he bore on his back at the hands of his own creation. That was to deliver us from being brokenhearted. That was to heal our minds. That was to heal and free our spirits so that we wouldn't go through life bound, choked up, tied up, tangled up in our emotional mess. That was so that we would get to know who we really are. So instead of being poor in spirit, we're rich in spirit. Why? Because of the confidence the abundance, the life source, the fulfilling, and the, the purpose that God puts in our lives. We don't have to walk through life grappling through the dark, groping in the dark, wondering, you know, what's this all about, Alfie? No. God will tell you what you're all about, if you're willing to hear. Now, we're going to do a little illustration just so you see what I'm talking about. Let's look at a tube of toothpaste. Hmm. Think about a tube. It can be anything in that tube. It can even be garlic or salsa. But the tube now is full. You apply a little bit of pressure, and as long as that lid is on that tube, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to come out. But if you take the lid off, which is what happens to most of us, when we don't have God in our lives, the lid is not there. And when life comes and applies pressure on us, what's inside will come out. That's what the Bible means when it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You got bitterness in your soul, your mouth is going to spew out venom. 
you got anger and resentment in your heart, your mouth is going to be like a two-edged sword, cutting everywhere it goes. You know how to cuss somebody out. You know how to tell them off up one end, down the other. You know how to put them in their place. They're not going to mess with you, right? That comes from what's in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So remember that Jesus came to heal what's in that heart. So when life comes to squeeze, instead of bitterness coming out, when life comes to squeeze, instead of anger, resentment, frustration coming out, calm, peacefulness, love, mercy will come out of your heart. Because if your heart is filled with the love of God, then out of the abundance of your heart is going to come the beauty of God's holiness. Not your ugliness that stems from your emotional and psychological scars. See, we all grow up. We have a lot of, of heartache. We have a lot of disappointment. People hurt our feelings. People reject us. People ostracize us. People criticize us. People kick us to the curb. People use us and abuse us in many ways. Some of you have been raped. Some of you have been molested. Some of you have been bullied. Mm -hmm. So you grow up in a spirit of fear, anger, bitterness. Ain't nobody going to step all over me. So what do you end up becoming? You become an abuser because you're the one that's always got to be in control. It's going to be your way or the highway. You don't realize how that affects you. But that's what shapes who you become as an adult. And then it's hard for people to be around you because you're so controlling. It's so hard for people to be around you because you have become a bully based on what's inside. And as soon as life adds a little pressure, that little squeeze, your mess comes out instead of the blessing of God. Instead of the sweetness of God's spirit, your mess comes out. Because you're going to have control of this. You're going to run things the way you want it to be. You're not going to take nobody telling, telling you what you can't do or what you need to improve. You don't want to hear it. Who are you to tell me anything? Sometimes what they are or who they are is God's agent trying to help you grow beyond where you've gotten stuck. You hear me? You don't want to be stuck in your life. You want to live the abundant life. Please remember that. When you live the abundant life, your heart is full of love. Your heart is full of mercy. You are full of peace, not full of it. And you know what happens when it hits the fan. Mm. It reminds me of emotional people. They live in their emotions. They're governed by their emotions. Their mouth is run by their emotions, just like squeezing that too. Yeah, you squeeze it, it'll come out. <laughs> and it's like the, uh, the hippopotamus at the zoo. They get a fat attitude and they'll turn their behind in your face and they will push out excrement and fan it with their tail to make sure the mess gets on you. So my point is, don't live a life like that. Don't live a life tied up, tangled up in your emotions or your emotional scars. Because you have to know God is in control. You do not have to live a life out of an emotional cripple for the rest of your life. You may be an emotional cripple now, but that's what Luke chapter 4 is about. Isaiah 61 says basically the same thing. He will comfort those that mourn. He will attend unto those that mourn in Zion. He will give you beauty for your ashes. Mm, the garment of praise for your spirit of heaviness. God will give you a fair exchange and you will get all the goodies while you toss all your trash on him because the Bible says casting all your care on him because he cares for you. Let's get to casting y'all. Let's do what it takes to receive his blessing, shall we? Don't sit there and live a life tangled up, tied up. And here's the sad part. You know how he said he will give sight to those that are blind? 
Here's the sad part. Many of you choose to remain blind. And you don't realize you're blind. Because you don't know how ugly you act in public. You don't know how foul your attitude is. You can't see it because you're operating from a me perspective. Me, myself, and I. What it means to me. What good is it going to do for me? What you going to do for me? What about me? Hmm? So what Jesus is trying to get our focus on is what about them? What can I do to be a blessing to someone else? How can I edify someone else's spirit? It's not all about what I get out of it. It's not all about me getting all the attention, me getting all the applause. I know how to do this, and I know how to do that. And I'm skilled at this, that, and the other. And you're looking for applause. You're looking for praise. You're looking for approval. You don't need that from people. You get it from God, and you'll be settled in your spirit. That's when he says he will come to settle. He will establish strengthen and settle you in your spirit and you will find you're not flying off the handle you don't have a short fuse people don't get on your nerves for saying ABC and you don't even know why you get so upset but they bug you why can't they just shut up why can't they just be still they bug you anytime you find yourself being so easily bugged there's something in here baby that life is squeezing and it's coming out and God can get it out and make it stay out and replace it with his beauty, with his spirit of praise. You hear what I'm saying? With his beauty of holiness. He can replace it with his love. He can replace your anger with his patience. Your bitterness with, your mercy, with his mercy. Your hatred, your resentment with his love. Your nervousness, your, your, your short temper with his peace. But first, you have to acknowledge the fact that you have a problem. He will give you a fair exchange. But do you really want it? Or do you kind of like wallowing in your anger? Do you kind of like wallowing in all that, that light owes you? Hmm? Think about that. But do you notice when you look at a person who is drunk, who normally has a very sweet disposition. Deep down inside, they're just a sweetheart. When they are really, really sloppy drunk, you notice that nothing bothers them. They have that attitude of, is everybody happy? And they're not bothered. People can be arguing on their left. They can be throwing punches on their right, and they want to hold up the bottle and let's have a toast to love, y'all. Well, the reason for that is because they're so relaxed by the influence of the alcohol, nothing is bothering them. <clears throat> they're having fun. They're happy. And it's the same thing. Now, check it out. I'm talking figuratively now. Imagine a person in a car accident. They always say that the one who is the to be, uh, let's see, the one who gets the least amount of injuries, if any, is the sloppy drunk that doesn't even know what's going on. They're so out of it. Well, let's talk about drinking at Joel's place. That's a term we use in the church, in the body of Christ. And it's a, a comical term for being under the influence of the Holy Spirit. When you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit and, and full of the Holy Spirit, rather than being full of you and your issues, what happens is your heart is full of love. And the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. So because of that, People, things, problems, mishaps, bumps in the road, frustrations, delays, don't rattle your cage because you, you are under the influence. You are drunk with the wine of God. You are full of the love of God. You are swimming in the peace of God. Can't touch this. Why? Because you are so full of God, 
You're not bothered by the insignificant annoyances of life like most people are. And when you find yourself getting irritated, that's the time to go to God and say, Lord, I think my love tank is low. Would you fill me up with more of your Holy Spirit? Fill me up with more of your love. Fill me up with more of your peace. Fill her up because you need to go through this life drunk in the Holy Ghost. Love covers a multitude of sin. What is another reason, another meaning of that is you're not bothered by other people's faults. You're not bothered by irritants, minor irritants in life like you used to be. Why? You have a new nature. What made that new nature? The presence of the Holy Ghost in your heart. That's what makes that new nature. And you must be born again. So on a daily basis, you should be asking God, Lord, forgive me for all my sins, known and unknown. On a daily basis, you should be asking God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. That is the antidote to you. That's right. So now I'm going to finish with, this is my insert, because I didn't get to say all I wanted to say for the lack of time. But the Holy Ghost is the biggest, oh my goodness, that's the, that's the denominator that changes everything. That's the catalyst for you being a whole different person than living in that old man with those old issues and their old attitude and their raunchy disposition, the grumpiness, the meanness, the intolerance, the impatience that we tend to have when we are full of it and it meaning us. When we're full of us, baby, we stink. And the sad part is we don't even realize that we cause everyone else to be walking on eggshells because they can't tell when we're going to flare up, fly off the handle, go off at cuckoo, wonder where the temper is coming from. Nobody's doing anything wrong, but you're grumpy and you're mad at everybody and they don't know whether they want to be around you or avoid you. All right, now moving on with the message. I'm done with the insert. God bless you. Please continue listening. But remember, and I'm going to stop here. Go to God and ask for healing. Inner healing, emotional healing, psychological healing, spiritual healing. A lot of physical healing comes with that. Amen? All right. We're going to stop here for the sake of time. God bless you. Be encouraged. And know where your source is. And if you're full of Him... That when life comes to squeeze, beauty will come out. But if you're full of you, or full of it, whatever it is, no telling what will come out when a little bit of pressure squeezes on you. Amen? God bless you.